I'm Bill Miner. I'm a musician and a writer, and I came here in 1971 to teach English at Monterey Peninsula College. Uh, one of the first places I heard about was Calisa's down in Cannery Row, so I went down there at the earliest convenience, and it was a magical place in those days. You went through a beaded curtain. The interior, I think the best way I can let you know about the interior is I wrote about Calisa's. And when I did so, uh, I fictionalized and gave her the name Bordiana, which probably wasn't really necessary, but I'll just let you know what it was like to walk through that door. The color of Bordiana's cafe in Canary Row is outrageous, like the place itself. It's canary on a bender, mustard gone riotous, ochre seeking revenge. It's the moldy pewter yolk of a very old egg, and that's just the outside. The inside is catalyst for a Victorian wet dream. The walls are stained mauve bedsheets, dripped glass chandeliers, oversized mirrors, bulbous redwood framing assault one everywhere. The ceiling, a collage of gold leaf, filigreed cherubs and old newspapers is about to collapse. And the clientele, carnival primped or tourish posh, sometimes mostly about three in the morning, look that way too. The owner? She's an institution, larger than the place itself, commanding, sometimes even accommodating. If she likes you, you're treated like a long lost son or lover. If she doesn't, the reception is as dour as dour can be. I have been received both ways and on the same evening. That's Kalisa's and Kalisa. It was a really kind of a, a mag magical environment. And I'll tell three stories I have about my own experience and then just a couple others involving other people. Um, the last time I played there before it was shut down, closed, um, I I'm a musician. I accompanied on piano a 90-year-old opera singer from Russia who was the father of Olga Perry, a local artist. And uh, he sang, Kuda, 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 we Uda Lilis, Lenski's song from Yevgeny Onegin. And it was amazing. But the variety of things that happened in Kalisa's was remarkable, and I think the, you never knew exactly what was going to happen. I walked in one night by myself, this was long ago, and the place was empty and she was sitting at a table talking with Michael Parks, who was an actor who was in a TV series called Then Came Bronson, in which he rode around the west coast on a motorcycle doing good deeds, and he also was a fine singer. He had a song that he sang at the end of each program called Long Lonesome Highway, I believe it was called. And I ended up that night accompanying Marco, Michael Parks while he sang. I think the most memorable occasion was a scandal that took place. Kalisa called me one day and she said, guess who's in town? Harry James and Charlie Spivak, who were two great big band uh, musicians and band leaders. She said, they're living in town in Seaside behind Kmart. <laughs> which I found rather remarkable. And she said, come on down, you got to hear them. When I got there, the Harry, Harry James looked like what Harry James would look like if he'd gone to see it. He didn't have any teeth. He said, I can't play tonight because my bridge is being repaired a lot in Las Vegas, etc." Spivak looked spiffy, but he looked a little younger than Charlie Spivak would look. But then musicians sometimes make a specialty out of that looking younger than their age. And the Spivak guy played beautifully. And I was playing when I St. James Infirmary and he started playing and he came over and patted me on the back and said, you play good blues, kid. You know, so I was thrilled and off we went. Everybody in town bought into it. They had a New Year's Eve party. I had an old Benny Goodman 1938 Carnegie Hall concert album. And I thought, I'll get Harry James, because he was on that album, to sign it for me. And he did so with great flourish, even though he couldn't play that night. Spivak came in, tuxedo, little frill at the edge. Mozart, the whole works, played great that night. I had a friend, Jim Houston, over in Santa Cruz, a writer, and I said, I gotta tell you my Charlie Spivak story, and I told him about what had happened. And he said, well, let me tell you my Charlie Spivak story. 
And he said the same guy had rented out the VFW Hall in Santa Cruz, got about 200 people in the hall, played a great concert, but afterwards a few people from New York who remember Spivak said the guy's wonderful, but that's not Charlie Spivak. And to make it short, what happened is Don Schomber, who taught jazz at the college, Spivak's son phoned him from either North Carolina or South Carolina saying, my father's back here dying of cancer and some guy's out there impersonating, pretending that it's him. You know? And then I came into work one morning and another friend of mine, we'd seen these guys play, or seen Spivak play, had a picture of Harry James looking like the Errol Flynn handsome dude that he was playing up at the fair uh, up in San Francisco. And I said, this isn't our Harry James. <laughs> And I wasn't there for this, but apparently one night Spivak came in after all this had happened and someone tapped him on the shoulder. He started to take out his horn and someone tapped him on the shoulder and said, Charlie? He says, yes. He said, you're dead. And he didn't blink an eye. He put the horn back in the case and probably went off to Oregon to run the same scam again. You know. But that's the kind of thing that took place at Khaleesi's. It attracted everybody. A celebrities, Kim Novak, that was an habitué at one time, I guess, and uh, I found a quote from her saying that she thought Kalisa had the largest heart of anybody she'd ever met in her life, which was true. But she could also be difficult if you merited that kind of behavior. She was born in Latvia. She was a teenager during the German occupation and worked in a medical corps and then was a displaced person, and she married an American named Moore and came to the Monterey Bay area, and they got divorced, and she opened her place in 1959, um, and it immediately became popular. Very popular. The Smothers Brothers used to hang there. People at the Naval Postgraduate School, DLI, musicians, every kind of musician imaginable. I do work with a wonderful flute player named Richard Mayer, um, who was in, and he and his wife, Norma, a brilliant soprano, has a beautiful voice. They give concerts all over the world. And Richard was at the DLI studying Russian in the 60s. And they had a series of programs honoring Kalisa at the Wave Street studio, and Richard and I were asked to just talk about our experiences at her place. And he said that largely in the 60s there was a, a very a classical music faction. He was trained as a classical musician, and of course a lot of folk music being played. And there was more jazz, I recall, during the 70s. Um, a lot going. A wonderful pianist named Alan Berman, and I used to share chores down there, and Alan went on studied with Jessica Williams, who went on to be a really fine singer um, pianist. A friend of mine named Steve Turner, who was a writer in Santa Cruz, did a piece on her in 1989, giving her entire history and talked a lot about the place. And he had gone down there himself in the 60s, and I think that's where he met his wife. So a lot of eventualities you know, would, would, would come out of Kalisa's. Uh, but he told a story about a guy named Old Tex. Kalisa's was La Ida Cafe, and she kept that name deliberately because that was a house of prostitution during the Steinbeck era. And she started in 59, and that's four years after Sweet Thursday was published. Yeah. And I guess Tex came in and said, where are the girls? And Kalisa said, thinking he was talking about the waitresses, and she said, they've gone home. And he slapped $20 down on the table and said, well, you'll do. <laughs> so there are hundreds of stories that have come out of everybody's experiences at Kalisa's, and I think it was Definitely a continuation of the Steinbeck spirit, and it, for a while, perhaps the only one. And also, it was just a magical place that you never knew what was going to happen, and it was a great place to go to and find out what that might be.